Hey everyone, this is Mark. Happy New Year and welcome to Vinyl Crush. Today I'm going to show you roughly 20 albums for 2020. Uh, these, these are the top 10 or top 10 of the albums that were released or reissued in 2020 and also the top 10 of the albums that I found uh, crate digging in 2020. Um, I'm mostly going to show albums we haven't seen before. There might be one or two, and I'm going to do a couple of also mentioned that I've shown recently, but still they're best from 2020. So I'm going to kind of pop those in in the middle. So first, the 10 albums that I think are the most significant um, reissues or uh, new releases for 2020. And they're in no particular order. So first one is Fall to Pieces by Tricky. Tricky has been around a long time. He was one of the founding members of Massive Attack. He's done projects with Bjork, with Martina Topley Bird. Uh, he's, he's really famous for doing a lot of trip hop and stuff like that. In this album, it's more uh, down tempo, electronic hip hop. Uh, he has two female vocalists. I think one's name was Marta and the other one's name was, it was a Danish uh, artist named I think it was O Land, I believe was the name that they gave. Uh, I'm not familiar with either of them and I didn't have time to really look them up, but this is an astoundingly good album. Um, down tempo, electronic hip hop. Um, I love the, the labels and the cover as well. Um, incredible album, really enjoying this album. So this is an album I showed in the very first video that I did, like seven months ago and I'm going to show it again because it is I, I still listen to it all the time it's called Ohms by Trees Speak. Um, Trees Speak is a, is a band out of uh, Tucson Arizona and their music is like 1970s Tangerine Dream meets heavy Pink Floyd meets Noi. It, it's got a little Philip Glass in there it's just great uh, wonderful music, highly recommended if you haven't heard it. If any of that kind of music is stuff you like, you'll enjoy this record. It's wonderful. So I uh, just wanted to show it one more time. Um, worth checking out. So this album is, it's called, uh, I think it's called Wamono. Uh, it's essentially, they call it Japanese Jazz, Funk, and Rare Groove from 1968 to 1980. Uh, wamono means uh, traditionally Japanese or made in Japan. So it could, it could apply to any objects or things that are traditionally Japanese or made in Japan. Uh, this music is really um, Japanese take on what was happening in, in, I believe, more like American music in soul and funk and jazz during that time period, about a 10, 12 year time period. And it's really remarkable. It's, it's really fun. There are two um, DJs. I'm not remembering their names. DJ Yoshizawa Dynamite and uh, and Chintem no Chintem Blow Up. Two DJs from from Japan. They did tremendous amounts of crate digging to come up with this music. Uh, it's it's got just amazing stuff that uh, has never been heard before in the U.S. Uh, check it out. It's it's a really good album. Uh, it's also really flat, well pressed. So this album is another remarkable album. This is called Do You Believe It? This is a triple album. There's three discs in here. It's put out by Mississippi Records. You can find them online. They're actually a Portland uh, uh, company. And it's, it's essentially music from uh, the, the 60s and 70s. Uh, and it's all soul. It's just it's just all these beautiful soul songs, most of which you've never heard before, but they're incredibly wonderful from all sorts of different uh, bands from all sorts of different across the spectrum. It's, but it's all incredible soul music. Highly recommend checking this album out if you like soul at all. This is a beautiful album. Uh, you can probably find it online. So next, here's one more I have shown before. Again, this is this is one of my favorite rock albums in this year by far that has come out. It's it's actually a reissue. It's a remaster. The band is called 30 Ought Six, and the album is called Boso Zoku. Uh, these guys were a Portland band back in the 90s. Um, they reminded me a lot of uh, of Smashing Pumpkins and um, kind of uh, I, I'm thinking of Slint. I don't know. Um, it's it's very it's not complicated it's not too complex but it's really alive beautiful 90s rock and roll it's just great 
love this album. Um, please check it out. By the way, for this one, it's kind of hard to find. You can find it on Spotify, so you can listen to it there. But if you want to buy it, I'm going to put a link below on where it's available. But check it out. It's worth it. Prince. The reason I'm showing this is because this is a reissue. Uh, and the reason it's significant to me, Sign of the Times is an amazing album in Prince. How could you not want to own this album anyway? But the original pressing or the original version of Sign of the Times, even, even digital, um, all of the songs were uneven in terms of volume. So it just didn't play well. You'd have to turn the volume up and down. And it was really weird. This has all been fixed here. The remastering is wonderful. The vinyl is flat. Um, Prince, Son of the Times. I love this album. So glad that they redid this. It's nice to have it on vinyl like that. So this is an album I feel really lucky to have. Al Di Miola, Paco De Lucia, and John McLaughlin, Friday Night in San Francisco. This is an amazing live performance. Uh, it's, it's been redone, uh, 45 RPM. And uh, I want to say, so this is number 208 out of 3,000 limited edition. So I got really lucky and I just found it. I didn't even know it was being released. It was just in the record store in the bin. They're sold out now and uh, you can buy them on Discogs for like a hundred bucks, I think. Uh, it's, it's, here I'll pull this out and show you real quick. What an amazing album and what a great pressing. 45 RPM, it just sounds beautiful. It's incredibly popular. If you can find a copy of this, if you like, sort of flamenco, uh, um, Latin, um, pol not polka, uh, um, anyway, it's incredible guitar music, wonderful, highly recommend it. All right, this is one of the new releases from the, the uh, Tone Poet uh, Blue Note series. This is, uh, this also is sold out. So you can, I found this still in a record store. I was going to own it. I was going to try to buy it from, uh, from Blue Note online and gone. So I went to my record store. I went to, I hit three record stores here in town and one of them had one in the bin. So I grabbed it. Um, Duke Ellington, Charlie Mingus and Max Roach. What an incredible trio. This album is just wonderful. Again, I just, I keep throwing it on and listening to it over and over again. It's an amazing album. It's a great pressing, uh, great remaster. Love this album. So this is classical. So this is Vikinger uh, Olafsson. Vikinger Olafsson is uh, a pianist and he's doing uh, Debussy and uh, Rameau. And it's, it's all solo piano and it's so well recorded and so well pressed. And it's just beautiful. I really love uh, how the French do um, piano music. I, Debussy is one of my favorite. I own most of the piano music done by, uh, written by Debussy, and this is a great recording of this. Highly recommend it. Um, beautiful uh, cover as well. Um, but love this album. Next, I have Neil Young, Homegrown. This is an album that Neil recorded right after he did Harvest, which is one of my favorite Neil Young albums. And, uh, and he was recording a bunch of stuff. He put this aside and he released an album called On the Beach, which was, he released a live album before that, but On the Beach was his next studio album. Uh, and then this sort of was put aside. It was never released. So this year they, Mastered it, released it, and it's an amazing album. Uh, I think it's one of Neil Young's best, and I'm really enjoying it. So, next I have. So this is Yannick Pence. The album is called Eternity. This is one of those Record Store Day releases that uh, I ignored. I didn't know what it was. Uh, and then I did some research on it because they still had a few left, and there's only 300 of this made. In fact, I wonder which one of these I have. Uh, it comes with an insert that's signed on the bottom right corner there. Um, and I have number 256 of 300. Yannick Pence is uh, a young 
a guitarist from Poland. He does finger style guitars, all, all solo stuff. Uh, there's no singing, it's just guitar. It reminds me a little bit of like Michael Hedges in that he's outside the box. He, he's playing all kinds of interesting things. It's not free, it's not um, avant-garde, it's just beautiful but unique, kind of like listening to Debussy do piano music. It, it's, it's very melodic and beautiful, yet it's different than anything else anyone else has done. Uh, it's a great album. There's still stuff you can find on Discogs for this, but I really love this album. I was really happy that I came back and got it. So that's that's 10 albums, but I have some also rands. These are albums that I think are also released in 2020, either reissues or new, that um, I've already shown recently from Record Store Day, but I got to run them through real quick. Grand Puba, this album, double album, this is one of my favorite albums of the year. This is so good. I was just listening to it today while setting up to do this video. I love this album. If you do not have this, go get it. If you like hip hop at all, this is this is your album. Rory Gallagher, Cleveland Calling, his his solo acoustic show in a a uh, radio station in Cleveland. This is outstanding blues acoustic, just him and his guitar and harmonica. A little interview with the woman that ran the station, really intimate, great album, love this. Uh, Mutual Attraction, um, this is high pulp. This is an amazing album. It's actually uh, uh, an EP. Um, it's it's psych jazz. It's a, a local. It's a Northwest band from Seattle, eight piece jazz band. This is killer. This is so good. I love this. Check it out. This was also a, a record store day release. I think there was a thousand, but I'm sure there's some out there somewhere. We can't forget Miles, Miles Davis double image. I like this almost better than than Bitches Brew. I think this is an outstanding album. It's so beautiful to listen to. We gotta fetch the bolt cutters. Fiona Apple, great album. Everybody's talking about it. I really like it. Uh, they reissue Tom Petty's Wildflowers. Great, beautiful pressing, beautiful sounding. The extras are wonderful. And this is not least, last but not least, Door Door. This is a, a birthday party, Nick Cave, um, before they were birthday party. And it, it's it's an astoundingly beautiful sort of, got a little pop feel to it, but it's kind of rock and roll and kind of a little punk. It's, it's great. It came on Red Vinyl, Record Store Day. Love this record. So next I'm going to show you the, the 10 albums that I have really in, enjoyed that are Great finds for me as I try to grab all ten of them over here uh, from 2020. So first I'm going to show you uh, Ziggy Stardust, David Boy, my favorite Boy album. This is the first U.S. pressing of this album. I just picked this up this year. I was really happy to find it. I love this album. Great to find the first U.S. pressing of that. This is the first U.S. pressing of Bob Dylan. Um, Free Will and Bob Dylan. This is an amazing album. What's really nice about this, this is literally mint condition. It, it is in perfect shape. Everything about it, it plays perfectly. It's just unbelievable. And I, and I got it for a reasonably good price too. So um, I have the first pressing of The Cramps, Bad Music for Bad People. I just love the album cover. The music is incredibly good though. Um, this is on IRS labels. Um, the Cramps, great sort of uh, psycho Billy punk, uh, great stuff. I found a um, monk. It's monk time. This is this is a promo copy, white label. Um, just so happy to find this. I'm a huge Thelonious Monk fan, and this is this is it's so nice to find a promo copy of his. First pressing, uh, B-1000 by Guided by Voices. I'm a Guided by Voices fan. I have first pressings of like, like their first six albums, I think. Um, amazing. Their first albums were amazing. This is a really good album. This is one of the first pressings on blue vinyl. Uh, I found this recently in relatively mint condition and really enjoy this album. It's a lot of fun. Glad to find a first pressing of it. So this is Ricky Lee Jones. This is an album that she did of covers. It's called It's Like This. 
it's her version. It's like this. This is how you do it. And it is. This is um, 45 RPM, double album. It, it, the, the quality on this, uh, it's done by, um, I'm trying to remember, I think it's acoustic, vinyl, well, anyway. Um, this album is astounding. Um, it's all covers. She does a cover of um, Showbiz Kids, uh, an incredible cover of Trouble Man, uh, the, the Marvin Gaye tune. She does a really good cover of For No One from um, Revolver by the Beatles. Uh, Low Spark of the High Heel Boys. These are just incredibly beautiful, delightful, powerful, delicious covers that she did of all these songs on 45 RPM. It's an it's a, it's a incredible album. I can't stop listening to this. Okay, I've shown this one before, but I love this album. I have to show it again. Vince Guaraldi Trio. It's Vince and a drummer and a guitar player. Uh, is it a drummer or is it a bass player? Sorry, Vince on piano, uh, guitar player and a bass player. That's better. And, and it's just such a beautiful album. Great jazz. Uh, first pressing, red vinyl. Um, I, when I found this, I was so happy. It was such a great album. Okay, coming up on London Calling. This is a first US pressing of London Calling by The Clash. And I just found this recently. I didn't have any copies of this before. I um, was happy to find a first US pressing. Okay, last two. This is a first stereo pressing of The Cooker by Lee Morgan. This is an amazing album. I just received it, uh, the, the um, the Tome Poet version of it as well. I have yet to put them both on and listen to them side by side. But uh, the, the album originally came out in mono in 1958, and then the stereo came out in 1968. And it's, it's beautiful. I just love this album. It sounds so good. I can't imagine that, uh, that the reissue could sound any better than this, but it's nice to have a really mint condition first pressing of this album. So I, Love, this is my favorite Jimi Hendrix album, Axis Bold as Love. And um, I found this for like $15 uh, in a used record store. And it's the first pressing on, on the Tritone reprise labels. It's, it sounds, there's very little surface noise. Um, the cover's in reasonably good shape. Uh, I, I was astounded. This is worth way more than what I paid for it. Uh, and I love this album. It's so nice to have this. So that's my top 20 plus some for 2020. Hope you enjoyed it. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you all in this new year. Hope we can all work together and have a great year together. Thank you.